This is General Sheridan's grave, the Civil War cavalryman. Born Albany, New York, March the 6th, 1831. Died Monquit, Massachusetts, August the 5th, 1888. Is there anything there about Lieutenant Richard L. Perry? No, he's not listed. Then, sister, why is he buried here? Well, no doubt he did some unusual service for his country. They all did, or they wouldn't be buried in Arlington. been told. Spaniards had their navy, we had Admiral Dewey. I suppose you know the Admiral is very, very fond of you, although he says you're an incorrigible young rascal. Are you? Well, of course, I had my training under the Admiral. Oh, about me? Eavesdropper. I'll repeat it to my face. Now, you two run along and dance. This young lady thinks I'm more at home on a battleship than at a ballroom. I do not. I love to dance with you. <laughs> you should be with the diplomatic corps. Now, Run along. Yes, sir. <laughs> Remember, you're going to tell me more about Manila. Perhaps the Admiral will tell you. He was there, too, you know. Oh, oh yes, so you were. Bart! I'm sorry, sir. That was Teddy. Yes. Thanks, Mrs. Carter. That was bully, bully. I'm deep. I Well? Lieutenant Perry? Yes? Mr. Andrews would like to see you, sir. Mr. Andrews? Yes, sir. Follow me, please. Will you excuse me, please? Of course. Martin. Yes. <laughs> Lieutenant Perry? Yes, sir. I am Andrews, Mr. McKinley's secretary. I know, sir. Come in, please. The president will see you now. The president? I'm afraid you've made a mistake, sir. I'm Richard L. Perry. Yes, I know. The president wants to talk to you. Mr. President, Lieutenant Perry. Good evening, Lieutenant. Good evening, Mr. President. Uh, pull up that chair a little closer. Thank you, sir. How's the reception going? Very well, sir. Everybody having a good time? I think so. I know I was. I wish I could say the same for myself. But that's the way it is with White House parties. They rush me in and uh, rush me out again. I give them, and the vice president has all the fun. Yeah, I bet Mr. Roosevelt hasn't missed a dance. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant, I've just been going over your record. You have, sir? I asked General Miles and Admiral Dewey to send me reports on half a dozen of you young men who were... Uh, more or less distinguish yourselves in the service of your country. Yours is quite interesting. In fact, uh, amazing. Well, I... I thought I'd explained all those... Uh, those scrapes to Admiral Dewey. So you have, and I congratulate you. I don't know when I run across a young man so, uh, adept at worming his way out of his difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> now, that brings me to why I sent for you. Are you familiar with, uh, with these? Why, 
Yes, I, I've seen the newspapers, of course. What alarms me is why our Secret Service is unable to find out who's behind these robberies. I've had Bradley Wallace and his men working night and day. But every move they've made seems to be anticipated. The only thing they have found out is that all these robberies are committed in exactly the same manner. The robbers enter the bank with pass keys. Once in, they seem to know not only all about the alarm systems, but the safe combinations as well. That fact leads to only one conclusion. Yes, sir. Well, obviously, these men are being furnished with vault combinations and other vital information. What is it you wish me to do, Mr. President? I want you to find out who the actual bandits are and through them the name of the man or men furnishing them with information that makes it possible to circumvent the Secret Service. I see. As long as leaks occur, no Department of Government is secure. Our military and naval secrets, our relations with foreign governments, the most intimate details of the Executive Department are in jeopardy. I understand, sir. I've gone as far as I can using the regular channels of the law. Now something else has to be done. That's why I sent for you. Will you arrange for my leave of absence? You'll have to get out of the Navy without anyone knowing why. Not even our friend Admiral Dewey. In fact, no one must know about this except you and me. You'll have to, uh, you'll have to change your identity. Drop out of sight completely. Even your intimate friends mustn't know where you are or what you're doing. Very well, sir. It may take you months, or you may fail entirely. In any event, this is our game, yours and mine. But I don't want you to even communicate with me, unless you have some vital information or, uh, or your life is in danger. You must act on your own, independent of all else. Now, when it is necessary for you to reach me, Put this mark on your envelope. I'll instruct Mr. Andrew to deliver it to me unopened wherever I am. Yes, sir. Until I receive an envelope from you with this mark on it, you and I have never met. This meeting never occurred. You simply attended a ball at the White House, and, and I was alone in my study. I understand, sir. I'll do my best. I'm sure you will. Good night, Mr. President. Good night, Lieutenant. Two bits. Jake with me. I gotta carry it for protection. Yeah, with all this bank robbery going on, I don't blame you. You from around here? No. down tomorrow. Heading north, I suppose. I hadn't made up my mind. Why? Bulls are getting pretty tough around KC. I figured Minnesota would be about your speed. said it. Why are you so curious about the fellows I go with? Maybe I'm jealous. Well, you needn't be. They've all gone back east for their health. 
I'm figuring on pulling out, too. As soon as I get the fare. Which way, baby? St. Paul. That dump. Dump nothing. Say, there's a real town for you. Wide open and plenty of protection. Live and let live, that's their motto. As long as you mind your own business. For every bell and bow, I dress it up in music and in rhyme. Here's my little message to every bell and bow. It is just about the proper time to put down your glass, pick up your girl, and dance. Sway a bit, right then and there, tell her you care, and dance. Play a bit, lovable charm will fit in your arms, like a hand in a glove. Dancing is over. Here's what to do when it's over. Put down your girl, pick up your glass, and bring to love. <laughs> Hey, fix these suckers up with a star table, will you? <laughs> Howdy, this is Jock Ramsey. Well, How do well, you do? I'm glad to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> I have a table. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at this to see me, huh? Take a look at this, I get it? <laughs> <laughs> very, very funny. <laughs> Tony, show these gentlemen to a front seat, will you? This way, please. <laughs> see you around, Doc. Hiya, Mac. Great place here. Glad you like it. Shake hands with Joe Patrick. Joe? Matt Joy, the fellow I was telling you about owns the place. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Patrick. Thanks, same here. See you all later. Yeah, we'll be around. Hey, Ed, come on over. Glad to see you. Hi, Alec. How are they treating you there, fella? Hey, Dick. Ask Ed. He's got those cards trained. Just a little luck, my boy. Just a little luck. Frank. Looks like Ed's got himself a new sucker. Yeah, what a sucker. For the last week, they've been playing poker with Ed's cards. <laughs> You wouldn't believe it looking at this place. So the two fellas that own it were running a two-bit crap game back at Simon's Barbershop less than three months ago. If they're running a two-bit crap game, how'd they get all this? What's the difference? They got it. Alec, me and you ought to get us a printing press and make us some dough ourselves. You said it. Ah, well. music. 
romantic pleasure in my arms and as we dance we find that we're dancing to paradise if only you will hum the tune mm -hmm. then i'll know the answer divine for it tells me Serenade in the sigh of the breeze, and the stars seem to dance in the sky when you are near. There's a symphony in the ripple of a stream. Life is a dream, heavenly dream. When I look into your eyes. Your eyes, I hum a waltz for you. When you come to me on a night like this, I hum a waltz for you. Whenever I thrill to your kiss. Music plays, you're in my arms, and as we dance, we find that we're dancing to paradise. If only you will hum a tune. Mm -hmm. Then I'll know the answer. Well. Welcome to the Capitol, boys. Remember the name, Capitol. Waiter, some champagne for these gentlemen. Or did you boys just come to look at the girls? Anything you <laughs> say, Lil. Great place you got here. Thanks. Had to give St. Paul some excuse for living. <laughs> it's a Lollapalooza. Greatest flash west of little old Shy. Up to and including the stockyard. <laughs> I, uh, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Oh, Lil, a uh, friend of mine, Joe Patrick, Lil Durier. Glad to meet you, Mr. Durier. If Ed says you're friends, you're all right with me. Just let me know if they don't treat you right, Mr. Patrick. Pardon me, there are some people over there I'd like to shake hands with if I can borrow my hand for a while. Certainly, if I can have it back as soon as they're through with it. I'll remember that. Better get your mind off that, Patrick. Huh? Sit down while you're still healthy. I don't get it. Didn't you see those rocks all over her? That's a sign she's been reserved. Ah, don't be foolish. She was giving me the key to the city here. Be careful Jacques doesn't give you the key to the cemetery. <laughs> Jacques, what's he got to do with this? He's the fellow that owns all the keys. Hers and the one to the cemetery. Just the same, I think I'll give the little lady a chance to say no for herself. Here you are, sir. Thanks, ma'am. There, I forgot to tell you, boys, everything's wide open on the other side of those doors. Why not make expenses? Faro, Baccarat, perhaps Roulette, 21. I'll bet you're a wizard at 7-Up. <laughs> right over there. Hand these to the doorman and tell him Lil sent you. Why don't you take a chance? I think I will. Let me know how you come out. Pardon me, there's Doc Keller. Let's gamble. Yes, let's play roulette. Well, hello, Lil. <laughs> Look at old Doc. He sure can pick them young. Is he a doctor of horses? Horses, that's <laughs> good. Well, I guess the Doc yonder can cure anything that ails you the way he runs this town. Well, I get it, the boss, huh? You said it. What he says goes. Yeah, he's like this with the high and the low. All he does is say to the boys, mind your P's and Q's, nobody will bother you. To them higher up, it's leave the boys alone, they leave you alone. Well, that seemed fair enough. Sure is. 
You haven't heard of St. Paul being took, have you? Well, I think I'll take a squint at that roulette game and then turn in, unless you fellas want to stake me. Sorry, I got a place for all mine. That's all right. See you again, I hope? Sure, I'll look you up. All right, good night. Well, we warned him. I ain't even talking about it. Not in here. Give me a number quick, from 1 to 36. 23. 23 it is. All down. Single O, green. Maybe this isn't your lucky day. Maybe you're wrong. Could I uh, interest you in some champagne? Only in its sale. We could sit somewhere and watch it bubble and talk. What about? You and me. Or the weather. As far as you and I are concerned, that's taboo. As for the weather, my opinion's quite simple. It's hot in the summer and cold in the winter. <laughs> oh, you kids. Oh, look at it, Mac. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> don't, don't squint your eyes. Open them. Ain't that cute? <laughs> I don't see nothing. You don't know? You're crazy. Now do you see something? <laughs> no, I still don't see nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do. <laughs> Keep away from me from now on. <laughs> How are you, honey? Having a good time? <laughs> I was till you started cracking my ribs. Oh, the same old Lil, huh? Always got a comeback. Hey, I got a new one for you. Don't tell me I've got to go through that Ace of Spades trick again. No, no, no. This is a new one. Julia. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in the office. Wait for me, babe. Say, I thought you were going to help me pick a few winners. Oh, hello. Uh, Mr. Patrick, I'd like you to meet Jock Ramsey. Mr. Patrick is a friend of mine from Des Moines. How are you? I ain't complaining. Well, what do you say we shoot the works, huh? Hey, I want to talk to you. Yes, uh, excuse us, please. Sure, I'll wait right here. Be careful, son. It looks like rain. <laughs> That's very funny. He's big for his age, isn't he? I'll bet it's a tough job keeping him in tin soldiers and blocks. Come on. <laughs> Who's that monkey? Just a casual acquaintance. Well, see that he keeps casual. Making expenses, Doc? Why, these young ladies have already lost my wife's next month alimony. <laughs> How do you know I was from Des Moines? Because I am, and because that was the first thing that popped into my mind. Why'd you have to tell him anything? Because this happens to be our opening night, and I hated to see it end with one of the guests being taken out on a stretcher. Please, do me a favor. Vamoose, skadoo, and don't come back again. Maybe I'll see you here again tomorrow night. I doubt it. Something tells me the doorman isn't going to remember you the next time. Now, wait a minute. Get this straight. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to see a lot more of you. If you aren't careful, Mr. Patrick, I'm afraid you won't be seeing much more of anything or anybody. Now, good night. 34, yes. Be yourself. Frank, show this gentleman out. Certainly. I'll see you again. Good night. Hey, come on. See, I was just kidding about that trick. Let's see it. What? You know, the new one you had for me. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> look, take a card. Anyone. Now, look at it. Don't let me see it. <laughs> Put it anywhere you like. All right, now I'll shuffle it. <laughs> now, hold them in your hand. Now, do you want it on the top, the center, or the bottom? Which kabibble? All right. There it is. No. Oh, it is. No. Is that it? 
I made a mistake. I'll do it again. Here's something nice. For the self-supporting girl, the material for a frock of this design would be a useful gift. Ooh, pretty steep, though. Fifteen dollars. Can I see you tonight? No. Tomorrow night? No. There's a good show in town. It's Joe Jefferson and Rip Van Winkle. No. Well, how about a vaudeville show? Funny jokes and snappy songs. Eddie Foy, another one of those songbirds in the South. No. Now, here's just the thing. A waist easily clasped with two hands. Now, uh, I'd hate to start a rough house over at the Capitol, but if you don't meet me somewhere else, I'm afraid I'll have to do it. Don't be a fool. All right, then. Will you meet me, or shall I beard Jock in his own den? Well, I... I might Friday night for a little while. If you'll stop annoying me. Now you're talking. I knew you'd see it my way. But only if Bat and Jock go out of town as they plan. All right, where'll I meet you? We'd have to go someplace where we won't run into people we know. I can arrange that. What time? I'll telephone you. What's your number? Same as yours. National Hotel. Now, I know you're a fool. Same boat, folks? Sure, good old Hilda. I could have let over a dozen times already, but I said to myself, maybe they'll wonder again. <laughs> Thanks, Gus. We'll do the same for you sometime. Here you are, Gus. Dollar for the deposit, the rest for yourself. Oh, I tell my wife about you. She always says when you are in love, money don't mean nothing. <laughs> Steve and Gus, we noticed. <laughs> Thank goodness Hilda's got a nice flat bottom. <laughs> well, look for us when you see us, Gus. <laughs> Ah, just a fellow by the name of Joe Patrick. No, I mean, where do you come from? What are you doing in St. Paul? Well, I hail from Des Moines. I'm in St. Paul looking after a girl by the name of Lil. A great girl, too. Don't you do anything for a living? No. Got my hands full of taking care of you. You weren't in trouble, are you? Why do you ask that? Uh, I just wondered. Would it make any difference if I was? Not as long as you aren't in danger. Well, uh, there was a little trouble in Cheyenne, but forget I told you, I don't want you mixed up in it. No, that sort of trouble doesn't worry me. This does. You and me and Jock. Yeah, well, that's something we got to get straightened out. Just what does Jock mean to you? He doesn't mean a thing. He never has. Well, then why are you... Jock's are... wanted me ever since he and Bat have been together. I, I kidded him along at first because he was good protection. He kept a lot of other fellas from getting wrong ideas. But now he thinks he owns me. How did you and Bat ever get mixed up with a big lump like that? Oh, they were together long before I joined. You see, Bat isn't my real brother. He's my stepbrother, but... he's looked after me in a way ever since our folks died. <laughs> Seems to me he's doing it all right. 
It hasn't always been like this. I've been hungry plenty of times. What did Matt do? Run onto a gold mine? Well, that doesn't tell me everything. Yeah, doesn't seem to me like you got much to worry about right now. Except what Jock would do if he knew we'd been seeing each other. You're not sorry, are you? No. You do like me, don't you? It isn't just because I'm a, I'm a woman. Any woman? No, you know better than that. It was at first, wasn't it? Hmm. Maybe. I don't mind. In fact, it's a very comforting thought. When I'm here like this, Bat and Jock don't mean a thing. I almost wish they were staying in Omaha forever. Your note and came right over. Boys must be out of town again. They are for two whole days. <laughs> Say, some place you got here. Where'd they go this time? Oh, I don't know. Some place or other. I forget where. I thought maybe if you were free, we might spend the day together. Right. What do you say we run over to Minneapolis and see the sights? Mm -mm. Too many people we know there. Fort Snelling? No. I don't like a man in uniform. <laughs> Well, we could always pop in on Hilda. That's what I wanted you to say. <laughs> I'll never get ready if you don't stop forcing your attentions on me. <laughs> How long will it take you? Oh, about two shakes of a lamb's tail. Just give me time to run out of the room and wash. No, you can wash here. It's the same soap and water. It's a good idea. You'll find comb and brush and anything else you need in my brother's room. It's the other side of the bathroom. Thanks. An accident. Get some hot water and a couple of towels, quick. Get me a drink. That's all I want. I'll be all right. I am a What is this, Lil? I told you, he's a friend of mine from Des Moines. We were going for a ride. You're lying. Funny, I never saw him around Des Moines. You didn't know every fellow I went with. You're lying, I tell I'm you. I'm not. What's the idea of bringing him in here? He was jittery about some trouble he had in Cheyenne and wanted somebody to talk to, that's all. Hey, take a look at that. Hey, what is this? Dirty rat. Wait a minute, take it easy. Hey, where's this? The First State Bank of Cheyenne. Don't you know better than to take small town bills like these? 
They're too easy to trace. Maybe that's why I still got them. Or have I still got them? All right, Patrick, get going. If you ask me now, I I'm... didn't ask you. I'm sorry, Joe. That's all right. You ready? <laughs> she ain't going no place with you. Some other time. Oh, I see. Well, you should have told me. Yeah, and if you're smart, you'll go back to Des Moines. I'm doing all right here. Yeah, but you'll be a lot healthier in Des Moines. You don't look so healthy just now. What's the matter? Have a little accident? Anybody home? Oh, hello, Ernie. Come on in. All right, Patrick, beat it. Well, thanks, folks, for a very pleasant time. I still think your boyfriend here ought to be in rompers. Wow, oh, I hate that guy. One of these days, I'll take him and I'll bust him in two. Hey, who's it? Never mind, he's all right. Hey, sis, get that hot water in those towels, will you? Take a look at that. Oh, what happened? What happened, the dumb lug? Oh. I've always told him he's the only one that thinks those jokes of his are funny. Easy now. We go into a saloon in Elm City just to kill some time. There's a monkey sitting there with a bald head. Jock gives him the BBs. Well, the bald head don't think it's so funny. He gives Jock a bullet in the arm. Yeah, wait until I find him, that's all. Yeah, I know. You'll show him one of your card tricks. This kind of knocks things in the head, don't it? Unless I figure out another way. Sit down. What'd you find out about Milwaukee? A town that's hotter than a firecracker. The workman's savings has got a lot of money in it. Yeah, and a cop for every dollar. But Madison is Jake. There's a welcome sign all over it. They're expecting a lot of money from Chicago to pay off Saturday on the livestock the farmers have been selling. So you've got to crack it by Friday night. No, I can't get there. Not with this arm. You got the layout? Sure. Perfect setup. Here's the alarm switch. The vault is single action without a time lock. What about the bulls? I've got their scheduled time to a second. Those Madison bulls need a lesson. They drink too much. Here. Wax impression of the rear door key. Those numbers <clears throat> come from the east? No, not yet. But they will. They always do. Good. Where do I go next? Dodge City? No, we're branching out. I want you to get me the layout on Chicago. Chicago? Well. Now maybe I'll get to see a little real baseball. You feel all right? I sure do now, honey. Uh, I won't be able to show you that new trick now. Oh. Thank goodness we've got something to look forward to. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good evening, sir. Something I can show you? Yeah, I'd like to see some watch bobs. Yes, sir. I have some pretty ones right here. Here we are, sir. Oh, yes. That's nice. How much is it? Nine dollars. But it's real gold. All right, I'll take it. Thank you. Uh, would you like it in a box, sir? Yes, please. Thank you. Hey, those are nice. Could I see them? Yes, sir. Oh, I'll take care of that, Herman. No. Put them up. No. Put them up. No. Just be quiet and everything will be all right. Stop! Stop it! I've been robbed! I've been robbed! 
Bat, I want to talk to you right now. Come on in the office. What's up? Plenty. How are you, Doc? Well, Doc? It ain't fair, Bat. This town's been pretty good to you, boys. Let you do just about as you please. Well, what's eating you? You're getting paid plenty for it, ain't you? That's got nothing to do with it. The agreement was as long as you left this town alone, the town would leave you alone. Now, if that ain't good enough for you, and you want to get tough, we can get tough, too. Well, light somewhere. Where are you driving at? The Conheim job, that's what. Conheim? Who's that? The Conheim jewelry store's been robbed. A whole trailload of diamonds gone. Well, what's it to us if some greenhorn pulls a stick up? Sure, Doc. It couldn't have been one of the regulars. Maybe not. But if you like the climate here and you want to keep this place open, you better find out who it was. Them diamonds have got to be back by morning. Ah, you got bats in your belfry. We don't do things like that. Don't give me none of your arguments. This is a clean town. We're going to keep it that way. Besides, you know that Conheim's the mayor's brother-in-law. When did this happen, Doc? Tonight, about 8 o'clock. Any description of the fella? Not much. Just a $10 bill he left to pay for a watch fob. From the First State Bank in Cheyenne. Cheyenne? Hey, that's the... Shut up. Doc, suppose you come back in a couple of hours. Maybe we can find out something by then. You better. I've always played fair with you. I don't want any hard feelings. But I got myself to think about. Sure, I understand. We've all got our reputations to think about. <laughs> you said it. Well, Lil, looks like your friend has got over his jitters. Why didn't you tell the doc who did it? That you don't know it was Joe for sure. Jock, suppose you run over to the hotel and tell Mr. Patrick I'd like to see him for a minute. Oh. You can't push this on him. I won't... It's all right, honey. <laughs> Just a little friendly talk. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> what are you going to do? What difference does that make to you? I'm crazy about him. How long has this been going on? Ever since I met him. Does he feel the same way? It's all right with me, kid, if that's what you want. Do you mean that, Beth? Sure. Why not? All right. I wish I could make Jock see it that way. <laughs> well, you stick around. I'll have a talk with Patrick. Maybe I can fix things up. Will you, Beth? I said maybe. Hello, Lil. Pat. Uh, sit down, Mr. Patrick. Make yourself at home. Thanks. Lillian Russell? Sure, with pleasure. Try one of mine. A fellow in Havana makes them up specially for me. Oh, thanks. How about a little drink? Anything you say. This ought to fix you up all right. What's it all about? Now, don't get nervous. Take it easy. We're all friends around here. Did you get rid of those Cheyenne bills yet? Not yet. Know anybody who'll handle them for me? I might. You're kind of hard up, aren't you? No, I'll get along. Not sticking up jewelry stores in this town, you won't. Sit down, will you? Ah, oh, don't waste any more time. Let me give it a Jesus. Minute. All right, Patrick, fork him over. Don't you know this sort of stuff won't bring 10 cents on the dollar? I noticed you grabbed it quick enough when you found out where it was. Shut your trap. We don't want any of that trash around here. This stuff goes back where it came from. All right. What happens now? Patrick, 
Suppose we were to forget all about this little trick and let you in on some easy money. What do you mean, easy money? Oh, helping me with a few little odd jobs around here while Jock is thinking up some new jokes. Hey, you ain't figuring using him around here, are you? We can use somebody around here with a little brains that can keep their mouth shut and stay out of arguments. You ain't bringing him in. Well, I have something to say about it. I'd sooner see him rotten the gutter first. Shut up. All right, Patrick, what do you say? No, I don't know. I've always worked alone. A lot of dough in it. Not so many chances. Yeah, it smells fishy to me. First this guy here socks me in the chin, then you frisk me, and now you want me to join up. No, no, thanks. If I don't want it company, I'd have joined the Elks. Now, don't go off half-cocked, Patrick. Here's a little dough. Put it in your pocket. Go outside and buy yourself a drink. Take a look around. Take a squint at that new act I brought in from Chicago. Think it over. I'll see you later. Sure. I'll think it over. I'll give him something to think over. Forget it. If he wants to play ball with me, I can use him. If he doesn't, we've always got him where we want him. What? Sticking up a jewelry store is against the law, ain't it? Besides, Doc might like someone he could make an example of. Oh, yes. <laughs> I didn't think of that. <laughs> Bat, you aren't going to turn him over to the Bulls, are you? He had his chance. But you wouldn't do anything like that. You promised me. Why, that dirty little crook. After all the trouble we've had in trying to keep this place straight, we'll show those smart Alex they can come here and get away with that sort of thing in St. Paul. Hey, where are you going to? Leave her alone. Just because she made them goo goo eyes, she is a winner and she takes the prize. She is the best body, when I need her in my bed. Just because she made them too high. Jackie, Jackie, Sit down. Joe, you've got to do it. Sure, what? Come in with Bat like he said. He sent you out here to say that? You know he didn't. All right, what's the game? What's this all about? Well, I don't know exactly, but they'll turn you over to the police for that holdup if you don't. <laughs> Joe! It's a fine pair of pals you've got. I know, they're only thinking of themselves. If I beat it, they'll put the cops on my trail. If I stay here, I'll probably get Jock's knife in my back. Well, the only thing to do is to get in with them. Doesn't look like I got much choice in the matter, does it? You only have to stay until this blows over. Well, it may not be such a bad idea at that. First place, I could see a lot more of you, openly, I mean. It'll work out. I know it will. Hey, <laughs> I'm beginning to believe you meant what you said about liking me. You know I do. You're the first one in my whole life that I... I felt like this about. We're a lot alike, deep down, you and me. You mean that? Run tell bad I'm in. And then come right back here. I got a thousand things to tell you before I wet my whistle. That telegram with the numbers just came from the east. I'm gonna be in Madison Friday night. If Patrick wants to come along, it's all right with me.
But come on, Maxwell, come on. You should take more exercise. You're puffing like a white steamer. Well, for a while, it looked as though the Japanese had it on him. He put one over, caught Grant with the shoulders, kicked him in the stomach, and down Grant went in a heap. But quick as a flash, he was up and pinned the Japanese wrestler's shoulders to the mat. I knew it all the time. I said so before. American wrestlers got it all over jujitsu. I know. I've tried them both. Well, here we are. The president is expecting you, sir. Come on, Maxwell, come on. You can't keep the president waiting. Here we are on the dock. Sit hello, down, Teddy. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Maxwell. Good morning, Mr. President. Gentlemen. Cigars? No, oh, thank you. Not just, just now. I thought it best to have some of the members of the cabinet here, along with Mr. Wallace of the Secret Service, to hear what you have to say. Go ahead, Henry. Repeat what you were saying to me in my office. Mr. President, this bank robbery business has got to stop. Last night, $50,000 was taken from a Madison bank. As examiner of the national banks, I give you my solemn word that businessmen everywhere, including bankers, are losing faith in an administration which permits such lawlessness to go unchecked. I can only endorse what Mr. Maxwell has said. At the same time, I must frankly admit we're helpless. With all due respect to you, Mr. Wallace, you can hardly expect me to say to the business interests of this country, your government is helpless. Mr. Wallace's secret service has thrown up its hands. You will have to get along as best you can. Uh, Mr. President, if you feel there's any other man in the country better qualified to carry on this job, I'll gladly step aside. You are doing all that any man in your position could do. Handicapped as you are by lack of men and funds, May I suggest that you get more men, more funds? By God, he's right. Let me handle this situation. I'll organize a police force that will turn this country inside out. I'll swear in every rough rider who climbs San Juan Hill. I'll put soldiers around every bank in the Midwest. I'll catch these men and sweat the truth out of them. That's an idea. I've been preaching it for weeks. Time has passed for pussyfooting and weasel words. If these men want war, let's give them war wherever we find them. You can't fight men like these with words and vague hopes. It's all very well to talk softly, but you've got to carry a stick, a big stick. That's a nice phrase, Theodore. You want to use it publicly sometime. Yes, talk softly. No, speak softly. Speak softly and carry a big stick. That's better, more alliterative. I remember that, Mr. Root. <laughs> Mr. Wallace? What do you think? Well, there's a lot of truth in what Mr. Maxwell has said. And a lot of good sound sense in Mr. Roosevelt's suggestions. I'm inclined to agree, gentlemen. I had hoped, well, that uh, we might get a lead. But apparently not. So go ahead, Mr. Wallace. You have complete authority. Do anything you see fit. But get me the names of the persons behind all this. Thank you, Mr. President. That's the kind of word my bankers want to hear. Well, that's all. I'm going for a horseback ride with Alice. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, Teddy. Goodbye. 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 Remember what I said? Speak softly and carry a big stick. <laughs> <laughs> nation is a suffragette, a bold and huffy bluffragette. How she worries about everybody's wrong. Instead of spending afternoons chopping up beer saloons, why don't she stay at home where she belongs? Was an old beer bottle sailing across the foam. Was an old beer bottle a many a mile from home. And it is was a message, and this was written all. Whoever finds this bottle will find the beer is gone. The Yes, sir, Mr. Black. The 
get a hold of Mr. Ramsey and Joe Patrick. Tell them I want to see him in here right away. Yes, sir, Mr. Bat. I was going to get him. Jack, you and Joe get your things packed. We're leaving town. Yeah? Where are we going this time? Baltimore. Baltimore? Kind of branching out, ain't we? Yeah. The president's getting a little fidgety. He's putting special guards in every bank in the Middle West. Why Baltimore? That's no place to hide out, is it? They've got banks there, haven't they? Sure. Then use your head. They move west, so we move east. Walk into the Gorman National right under their noses. Catch them napping and pull a haul that is a haul. How'd you find out all this? Oh, we got a friend. Yeah, but if the government's stepping in, that puts a new light on the situation. I'd like to know who this big guy is that can take care of things so easily. Never mind. I'll take care of you. Well, that sounds all right, but suppose something happens to you. Then I'll take care of you. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Nothing happened to you in Madison, did it? No. Well, then nothing will happen to you in Baltimore. Just you leave things to me. All right, you're the boss. Lil can stay here and take care of things. We're catching a two o'clock train. I'll have the reservation. Well, I think I'll slide over to the hotel and pack. Sure, go ahead. Hey, what are you taking him for? I'm all right. We can handle things without him. Well, of course, we could leave him here to take care of Lil. What? Oh, no, no, no. He's going to come right with us. I'd like to know that Bat and Jock and I are leaving town tonight. Tonight? Damn, Stay right there. I've got to talk to you. Where are you going? Baltimore. Joe, you can't go. Why not? Well, don't you see? This is our chance to get away. We can be gone before they know it. You give up all that easy money. Joe, I can't stand it like this any longer. Let's get away while we can, please. Did you mean it when you said you loved me? <laughs> you know I did. Then you've got to do what I ask. You've got to make up your mind right now whether you're going with them or coming with me. Hello. I'm no saint, but I'm not blind either. I know Bat and Jock didn't open the Capitol on nothing. Perhaps I've closed my eyes to a lot of things, but you're in it now and I'm worried. Let's get away from it, from Bat, from Jock, from all of it. But it will only be gone a few days. Then we'll... If you go to Baltimore, I won't be here when you get back. I'd rather have it over with once and for all and go on like this. Please say you'll go. Now, tonight. All right, I'll go. I'll meet you at the hotel as soon as I can get out of here.
Give me that. Sit down. Pretty good likeness, don't you think? Why, you dirty little... Joe! Joe! Joe, we've got to hurt. Joe! It's all right, Lil. Sure, it's all right. I love Joe, do you understand? I love him. I see, I got eyes. I never loved you, you know that. Sure, I know it. You were right to choose the man you want. And I, like a sucker, thought it was me. Huh. And so long as it ain't, forget it. You don't have to run out on account of me. Do you mean that, Jock? Why not? Sure I do. It's a free country, ain't it? Besides, you're not the only pebble on the beach. Patrick, I'll see you at the station. He's lying, Joe. That wasn't him speaking. He wouldn't let me go like this. No, he won't do anything. You don't know him the way I do. We've got to leave right away. I'm sorry, Lil. But I'm going to Baltimore. Oh, no, Joe, you can't. You promised me. Uh, you wouldn't want me to run away, would you? But you've got to come with me. Something will happen. I know it. I feel it. This is my affair, Lil. You gotta let me handle it my own way. He'll kill you, Joe. No, he won't. I'll take care of that. Now, you better run along. I gotta pack. I'll say goodbye at the depot. Listen, Brad, I've just got word that those bank bandits are moving eastward. Gorman National Bank. Baltimore. Yes, of course, Mr. President, I'll attend to it personally. May I ask where you got the information? I'm sorry, Brad, but I can't divulge the source to anyone. But, Mr. President, you must realize that any clue of this kind would be most valuable. I understand, Brad, but it's impossible. Now, you keep the bank covered. At last, we're getting somewhere. Uh, get me Mr. Maxwell at the bank examiner's office. Maxwell, President McKinley on the telephone. Yes, Mr. President? Maxwell, I have some splendid news for you. I believe we're just about to put an end to all these bank robberies. Well, this is great news. Have you any definite information? Uh, uh, yes, Maxwell, but it's absolutely impossible for me to, to tell you any more at this time. That's what I've been waiting to hear, Mr. President. Thank you.
I want to make a call on the long distance telephone. Get me Baltimore, Century Hotel. Cancel that long distance call. Pull the burglar alarm switch. You come with me, Joe. through in there in a minute. I'll take this one out. Clean in there. Well, look at that box on top there. I'm going to shoot it out.
Got them both. This one's still alive. This one's cold as a cucumber. Come on out, with your hands up. Well, what do you know about that? Try to hide in the vault. Keep them up. sentence you to the Maryland State Penitentiary, there to remain until you've paid the penalty of this Commonwealth's justice, which is to hang by the neck until you are dead. What happens now? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing until they put that rope around our necks. Well, they ain't gonna put no rope around my neck. We'll be out here before you know it. Yeah? If we got so much protection, why didn't we get some of it at the trial? Well, uh, maybe he's got a reason. He'll show up when the time comes. But there are only 12 days left. Why don't he do something? I ain't worrying. Well, I am. I can't sleep. I can't think. All I can see is that rope. He's gonna let us die, I tell you. Say, if I could get in there two minutes with you, I'd stop you yelling. He'll come, I tell you. He'll get us out of here. Hey, <laughs> let me show you a trick. Here, look. Take a card. Anyone you like. Don't let me see it now. Put it back. Shuffle it. Did you, uh, did you take the air? The ace of spades. <laughs> A good trick, wasn't it, huh? <laughs> I dreamed about it again last night. Shut up, will you? I dreamed they came in and took us out, me and you. We were going up those steps. There were 13 of them. I counted them over and over again. Oh, you got bats in your belfry. I ain't gonna swing. Not me. You kept calling for somebody. I couldn't catch his name, but he didn't answer. Nobody ever answered. Oh, keep your nightmares to yourself. You gotta tell me who it is. We're in the same boat. I got a right to know. Well, I ain't telling nothing, see? I don't believe there's anybody. You're lying. There never was anybody. How do you reckon I got those boat numbers, eh? Then he's run out on us. Maybe things are getting too hot for him. You're crazy. Yeah, he sent us to Baltimore, didn't he? And there were a million cops around the place, weren't there? Who tipped them off? That was an accident. Yeah, I suppose this jail's just an accident, too. Quit your yapping, will you?
fasten the ropes. Nothing's happened yet. Maybe he's got to work on the quiet. Yeah, but he could have sent us some word. But we've still got time. we got time. For what? To sit here and go crazy? we got to get to him. Well, I ain't, I ain't giving in yet. You know what I think? I think he wants to see us hang. We know too much. Oh, he can't double-cross me like that. Not that guy. Yeah, I wouldn't trust the best friend I got in the world. When it comes to hanging, nobody's going to step in and talk. Oh, he'll spring us. I know he will. When? When it's too late? When we're dead? He'll come. He'll come. I'll bet he's laughing at us right this minute. I'll bet he even comes to the hanging. Oh, shut up, will you? Shut up! He's just shut up, I tell you! Us go up those steps. He wants to see him put that black cap over our heads and watch him tie that knot and see us drop. He'll be there to see us kicking and twisting. Oh, shut up, will you? Shut up! It won't shut be up. his neck. He won't have to hang there gasping for breath until his eyes pop out of his head and his tongue splits wide open and his heart bursts. It's us. You and me are gonna die, not him. Can't you see that, you poor blind fool? Sucker! Sucker, that's what you are. That's what you've always been. Dad was right when he said you were dumb. Lil know it, and I know it. You're letting this guy, whoever he is, make a fool of you. Well, he wouldn't make a fool out of me, I'd yell my head off. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it, the dirty rat. That's what he wants. He thinks I'm dumb, too. But he's got another thing coming. I'm not going to sit here and die to save him. Let him try putting that rope around his neck for a change. Let him see how it feels. Yeah, he can't get away with this from me. I'll get out of here. I'll get out of here if I have to tear the place down. I'll get out of here. I'll get out of here. Oh, no. Now he's got you. He's laughing at you right now. I can just hear him. <laughs> yeah. That's what he's doing. Big man, huh? Big office. Big bank examiner. Bank examiner of the United States. Oh, I'll get you, Maxwell. I'll get you, Maxwell. If it's the last thing I do, I want to hang for you, Maxwell. I'll tell you. I've got it, sir. I don't care what fool you got. You're not going to make it come out of me. I'm your friend. You know, hey, Mac, you're not a straight jack. Give us a hand. Hey, you can't double cross me like this. You can't. I'm not going to hang for you. No. I'll tear the place down. Take it easy. Oh, I'll get you. I'll get you. I'll tear the place down. Hey, Tim, I got to see the warden right away. The warden's not here. He's never here at night. But I got it, Tim. He's serious. I got some information he wants. All right, I'll see what I can do in the morning. I've got to get this letter to President McKinley, sir. If you have an appeal to make, Patrick, you'll have to let your lawyer handle it through the regular channels. But isn't it true, sir, that any man going to his death is given the privilege of a last request? Well, yes, ordinarily. Anything within reason. What possible harm can there be in letting me send this letter to the president? Oh, well, go ahead, but you're wasting your time. Thank you, sir. May I have an envelope? Thank you, sir. Hey, Tim, any word for me? No, not a thing. You positive? There ought to be a message here by now. I'll let you know as soon as it is. I'd sure be glad to get out of this place. Sure, <laughs> guess you would. Hey, Tim! Yeah? Did you hear about President McKinley? McKinley? <laughs> I knew it'd come. Let me have it! No, what? Just got shot a couple of hours ago up in Buffalo. Well, what do you know about that? The assassin was in line with a whole lot of others shaking hands with the president. Had his arm all bound up like it was rope, but it wasn't. That's where he had his gun wrapped in the handkerchief. They got the fellow wherever he was. They don't know about the president yet. All I know, he was shot twice, right through the stomach.
interesting news about the president? The papers say he's taken a turn for the better. I sure hope he has. What is it, any news? The president is dead. Lil, I thought I told you to stay away from here. Joe, I had to come. I had to see you. But I don't want you mixed up in this. What do I care? Tomorrow I'll die, too. Oh, isn't there a chance? Isn't there anything we can do? There might be. I'll do anything you know that. But first there's something I've, I've got to tell you. You probably hate me for this, but I've, I've got to tell you anyhow. How could I ever hate you? And try to understand this. My name's not Joe Patrick, it's Richard Perry. Well, lots of people change their names. I know, but that was, that was all a lie about my getting into trouble in Cheyenne and having to hide out. I've never been to Cheyenne in my life. Joe. What are you trying to tell me? That I'm not any of the things you think I am. I was lieutenant in the Navy. President McKinley sent me to find out who was robbing those banks. I framed it so that Bad would find those bank notes on me. I staged the jewelry hold up just to get in good with him. And part of the frame-up was pretending you loved me. That's not true. I do love you. At first, maybe I tried not to, but I do. You lied once. How do I know you aren't still lying? Darling, you've got to believe me. You used me to get Bat and Jock. No, it wasn't Bat and Jock so much. It was the man behind them. Don't you know who he is yet? Yes, I know. What are you doing here? Why don't your friends get you out? Nobody knew about this but me and President McKinley. Well, maybe there is some justice after all. If I could get word to Admiral Dewey, he might help. The warden won't let me get in touch with him. He thinks I'm crazy. Says my story's just a, just a trick to get a reprieve. What do you want to tell Admiral Dewey? The whole story. And I could prove it, too, by the message I sent the president that he was shot. See this? That's it. That mark in the lower right-hand corner of the envelope. And you think I might help you? You still think you can use me again? <laughs> well, that's great. Why, you low-down, contemptible stool pigeon. I'm glad they're going to hang you. Guard, open this door. Let me out of here. Lil. And if I can work it, I'll be there to see them put the rope around your neck. Lil. Take your hands off of me. 
Now let's see you lie your way out of this. Will! Will! She is, officer. But I don't... I'm sorry it's necessary to put you under arrest. You may be telling the truth. Then again, it may be a trick to get those men out of jail. I can't take any chances. Notify President Roosevelt. We're on our way. Yes, sir. Mr. President, this is the young woman I told you about on the telephone. I would like you to hear her story. Be seated, please. Go right ahead, Mr. Daye. Hello, Father. Well? Is there anything I can do for you? Some request you'd like to make? Yes, Father. Just one request. What is it? Give me a gun and five minutes outside of here. I got a few last minute jobs I've got to attend to. Think what you're saying. In a little while, you'll be going to meet your maker. Maybe I am and maybe I ain't. The only thing that's worrying me is leaving that low down, dirty skunk behind in this world. Grant, thou that this poor erring mortal may see the truth before it's too late. Sit down, Father. I want to show you something. Take a card. Any one at all. Put it back in the pack. Now shuffle them. Go through all the mail that has come for President McKinley in the past two weeks. See if you can find a letter with this mark in the lower right-hand corner of the envelope. Yes, Mr. President. Get all the help you need. If you find it, bring it to me immediately. Yes, sir. O oh, good and merciful God, who according to thy mercy and loving kindness forgiveth the sins of such as repent, and graciously remittest the guilt of their past offenses, mercifully regard this thy servant, and grant him full remission of his sins, who most earnestly begs it of thee. Renew, O oh, most loving Father, whatsoever hath been corrupted in him through Is this the one you meant, Mr. President? Do you recognize the handwriting? Yes, that's it.
Put me through to George Andrews, President McKinley's secretary. I believe he's still in Buffalo. This is Andrews speaking. Oh. Yes, Mr. President. Do you know anything about a letter with a secret mark on it that Mr. McKinley was expecting? Secret mark? No, not that I remember. You're quite sure of that? Well, I guess there's nothing to it. Sorry to have bothered you. Young woman, you almost got away with it, but you didn't. And I intend to make an example of you. Officer! But it's the truth, I swear it is. Or you can't let him hang. Take this woman out and keep her under arrest. Yes, sir. Sir, you can't do this. Please, you must believe me. Come on, young lady. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Mr. President. I should have realized this was simply a desperate scheme to save those men. It's all right, Dewey. It all comes back to me now. Mr. McKinley telling me if this mark should be found in any of his mail, and he was unavailable, I should go to his safe and find the explanation among his papers. Thanks, Andrews. That's all. Have them bring that young lady back. Yes, Mr. President. It was Andrews. He remembered about that secret mark. Get me the warden of the state penitentiary in Baltimore. I'll hold the line. Young lady, this is one time when the President of the United States will have to apologize. Hello, hello, hurry that call. This is the warden's office. This is President Roosevelt speaking. Yes, Mr. President. Are the executions over? One of them. Which one? Stay the execution of that man. You'll receive confirmation from your governor directly. And have the man brought to me as quickly as possible. Yes, he did. After his execution, he stayed. Thank heaven. Whew. With all the criminals there are loose in the world, we almost hanged an innocent man. Get me the governor of Maryland on the telephone. And now, young lady, why, she must have slipped out while you were talking on the telephone. Fred! Fred! Fred, did you let that young woman leave? Uh, yes, sir, I thought uh, you... Shall I stop her, sir? No, never mind. It's all right. Poor child. I guess she's gone through quite enough for one night. I hum a warm... When you...
Don't talk about it. Don't let's ever talk about it again. I had a job to do. I had to do it. I know. Regardless of who got hurt. You've come back. That's all I need to know. Neil, that's how cute. 